So over the weekend, the news came out that Baker Mayfield would not take a hometown discount um, in his pursuit to try to re-sign with the Browns. Now, honestly, this wasn't surprising news. Um, the reaction to it was a little bit more surprising than the news itself. I mean, even if he was willing to take a hometown discount, you still have to negotiate your contract at the end of the day to get what you want. And I don't think it's a great negotiating tactic to say, hey, I'm going to take less money up front. You know, I think that is a pretty poor negotiating strategy. So assuming that Baker Mayfield's agent is worth paying for, that's probably what should have come out. The reaction to this was a lot of people fixating on what the price of Baker Mayfield's contract should be. And I've thought about this, and the more I think about it, and the more I think about this, the more I just rethink everything about what I thought about the contract going into the whole conversation. And I have a little bit of a different opinion about the whole contract signing and should the Browns sign Baker Mayfield now. But yeah, you know, what's the situation with Baker Mayfield's contract and what's the value of his contract? We'll talk about that. But before I do that, I want to make sure I give a shout out to the Patreon.com dog check tier members that I'm going to start with. Michael Matik, Nick Merrick, Mike Lapa, Wes and Megan, Tyler Chiz, D.A. Jade, Easley Bash, Joe Hart, Gabe Real Wills, Fred Pratt III, David Valtiar, Relentless Buck, Chunt, Rex Kaufman, Kevin Johnson, DJ Marino V, Edward Carpenter, Matt H, Sign Sheets, Gemini, Liam Freeman, Fight Dirty 74, Yo Yo, Matt Lloyd, Paul Wilcox, Hundo Magnifico, Kyle Stuffer, Lukey from Munich, Deveroff, J Guy 101, Mussy Taco, Joe Bobby, Brad Cabo, Dylan W, James McGinley, Arenda Hall, Chad Gimme, David Malinato, Dylan Hell, Josh Ben Dorsch, Jaleel Salim Jr., Mark M, TJ Showman, Stuart Moore, Cleveland BCI, Robert Jermaine Jr., Dave Mike May, Andrew Hirsch, Curtis Byer, Batman, Barat Kumar, John Albert, Beerman069, Masayua Buzzer, Roland James, Nemo, Mac House, Reeve Hertz, Philip Wilcox, Marie Vivert, Sean Barron, Goggles Pisano, Corporal Nick Lopez, Dom Gazzulo, Nick Nasty, Ian Whitaker, Colin216, Christian, Dave Strong, Michael Stone, Billy, Moose Chantry, Austin Z, Mark Burnett II, Andre Griffin, Otis Wolf, Dog Pound, Kai Greg Ehlers, Austin Bowling, Lydia Mahawk, Jesus Serrano, Chris Foams, The Pick Town, Browns Backers, Max Nilakenko, Mark Khan, Max Al Dojo, and Water Bear Marketing. Again, guys, thank you so much for your support. It means a ton. Also, please don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and ding that notification bell so you can be notified when I upload. Again, guys, thank you so much for that support. Now let's have a conversation about quarterback contracts. You know, whenever you run into these quarterback contract um, conversations, whether it's on TV, whether it's in person, whether it's where it normally happens, to be honest, on social media. The conversation I always notice gets fixated on the amount of money that you're going to be paying a quarterback, the salary number. It's such an important fixture in these arguments um, about a quarterback, about whether a quarterback should be you know, extended and whether that's going to be a good move going forward. And obviously you can point at you know, some regrettable extensions that happen. But the more I look at that and hear these arguments, to be honest with you, the more it kind of changes and makes me rethink how I look at quarterbacks and should they get extended as much as they do. And what I've ultimately come to, or like the conclusion I came to, is that the amount of money a quarterback signs for might be one of the most overrated talking points in all of football. Now, why do I say that? Again, remember, these conversations always kind of fixate on the player's monetary value, on how much they're bringing in a year, and what that translates into winning right if Baker Mayfield gets 45 million dollars if he gets 35 million dollars what Aaron Rodgers getting what Tom Brady takes all of these things kind of become talking points when it comes to any quarterback getting any type of extension and the thing that I've realized and I just don't feel like the conversation of how much money Baker Mayfield signs for is as relevant as some people want to make it seem. Because it's not like there's a lot of examples in the NFL of a team not extending what they feel like somebody can be a star quarterback 
and then going out and paying somebody to be a average quarterback and average money to be that average quarterback and the team being able to utilize that cap space so effectively that they built like a juggernaut in lieu of not having a top tier quarterback. Matter of fact, most of the times what happens is that if you sign a average quarterback to average money, you're probably gonna have a average team. And my point by saying this is that extra cap space, that extra $10 million or, or 15 or $5 million between what you would pay Baker Mayfield and what you would pay Andy Dalton, right? That extra money in between. It's never been utilized so effectively that it makes up for the distance that a average level bottom 20 quarterback will be from a top 10 quarterback. So when it comes to re-signing these quarterbacks and we fixate on the number, it just ends up being pointless because what we're actually fixating on is that extra cap money, right? That 10 or 15 million extra money that you're gonna have. But show me an example in NFL history where a team, even like with Tom Brady, where he takes less money, you can argue maybe the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are an example of that. But most of the time, that extra money that you're not keeping because you signed a quarterback to a big deal, show me the time where that made a discernible difference in a team's ability to win a championship. It just doesn't. I think that portion of that money is just super overrated. And let's talk about you know a related topic to this, right, which is fair value for a quarterback. You want to pay the fair amount of money for a quarterback's level of play. But let me ask you this question. What's the difference from paying Jimmy Garoppolo $25 million a year and paying him $45 million a year? Are the 49ers any better or worse? Are they not already trying to get rid of Jimmy Garoppolo regardless? The conclusion is, for the 49ers, is that Jimmy Garoppolo at $25 million, which is now kind of a mid-level deal for a quarterback, is not worth it. And they'd rather take a chance in getting somebody who might command $40, $50 million down the line because you know with that guy, you will be a better football team. So yeah, you got a good deal on a good quarterback in Jimmy Garoppolo. You're not paying an exorbitant $45 million a year, but you're not really a better football team because of it. So again, it makes me wonder, how much does that number really matter for the quarterback? Ultimately, if a quarterback is not the guy, if he is not a franchise quarterback, if he is not a perennial top 10 quarterback, he's ultimately not going to be worth whatever extension that you're going to give him regardless of if it's $25 million to $45 million. Because at the end of the day, those are still huge contracts. Also, one of the things I don't understand why people tend to fixate on how much a player is making is one thing I have learned throughout the last few years in doing this um, daily is we have no idea what any team's true cap situation is. And anybody that tries to tell you that they know exactly what's going on with the salary cap is lying to you. Nobody knows. Like, unless you work in the NFL actively and you are one of those guys that are the salary cap manager, you have no idea what somebody's salary cap situation is. The cap is so flexible, it's so malleable, and also it's always growing. So we can fixate on $45 million a year. Say the Browns signed Baker Mayfield to $45 million a year for five years, right? It's a huge contract. That might not be that much of a percentage of the cap by the time you get to year three because the cap is always growing. And since the NFL is growing at a huge rate, the cap is going to grow at a huge rate since it's based on revenue. So this kind of old school ideal of if you give a quarterback a huge contract, you're going to hold your team back. I just don't think there's any real good proof of that. Yes, if you have a good quarterback, you're going to be close enough to be in contention to where people kind of focus on you not actually getting there. 
But the Cleveland Browns, before Baker Mayfield, had 20 years of not paying a quarterback $25 million or any big number, and they were never good. And you could say that with a ton of teams. I think that idea, that popular notion that, oh, if you give Matt Stafford a ton of money, you're going to be decent, but you're never going to be able to get over the hump, has come from those quarterbacks just being good enough to be able to keep you in contention, but the front offices and the coaching staffs that surrounded those players were never good enough to get pieces that can get him over the hump um, within the cap. And that's kind of created this notion that big time money quarterbacks are somehow a detriment to a team's ability to be successful when in the modern era, no, it's just absolutely not true. And all that brings me to this, the real question when you're talking about extending a quarterback and specifically we're talking about Baker Mayfield, you have to ask, isn't how much it's, do you believe for the next five years, Baker Mayfield will be a relative top 10 quarterback. So if not in the top 10, he's like 11, you know what I mean? So relative top 10 quarterback. I am not so hesitant to sign Baker Mayfield or extend him because I believe he has had two top 10 seasons, one bad year. We all know what went into that one bad year, and I think he's going to be a perennial top 10 quarterback. And if he is, whether it's 45, 35, 25, whatever he signs for, it's going to end up being worth it in the long run. The dollar amount just matters very little because when you have a top 10 quarterback, you're usually a team that can be consistently in contention. They're always in the playoff race. They're always in and around the playoffs. In football, a sport that's as much about luck and attrition and just flat out surviving a season as it is about skill, consistency is your best shot at winning, right? If you can hang around and be a good enough team for 10 years, your odds are much greater of being able to win a championship than in any other sport, right? In NFL, there are more flukes that happen. You can get lucky on a run and win a Super Bowl out of nowhere. Ask Philadelphia about that concept. So if the answer is yes, and you think Baker Mayfield is going to be a top 10 quarterback for the next five years at least, then honestly, it doesn't matter what the Browns pay him. They could pay him the most. They could pay him in between. They could pay him $25 million. As long as they have him under contract long term, that's what you want. You win there. It doesn't matter if it's a lot or a little. Because one, the argument that, hey, you could use that extra cat space to do this and that, show me the teams that have actually done that. Even with Tom Brady, right, the guy who's famous for this notion of taking less, the Patriots never really used that cap space. They were just great in spite of it. They could have been paying Tom Brady that entire run $35 million a year and still been the same level of team because they never really utilized that cap space greatly to the point to when they actually spend in free agency this year, it becomes big news, which is a dead giveaway that if they were using that money effectively when Tom Brady was there, then it wouldn't be news now that they're actually spending money. So they didn't even really use it well then. I think ultimately at the end of the day, Having that guy locked down, having that guy on your team is worth whatever extra $10 million that you are going to use to keep whatever player on the roster. And also, on the contrarian side of things, if you don't think Baker Mayfield's going to be a top 10 quarterback for the next five years, then you don't need to extend him. Now, I disagree with the take of that. If that's where you're at and you don't think he's going to be a top 10 quarterback and you need the money to be at a certain point in order to justify extending Baker Mayfield, then maybe keeping Baker Mayfield might not be the right thing to do for the team because we have seen that when teams get themselves in that position and you sign a quarterback to a small kind of average level deal, you get very average results. So even getting a great deal on a mid-level quarterback, which let me clarify, I don't think Baker Mayfield is mid-level. I think he's more along the lines of a top 10 guy. But if you do think he's mid-level, mediocre, kind of not top 10, not top 15, then it wouldn't make much sense to extend him. If that was the case, you might fifth-year option him. You might even give him one year of a franchise tag, but you would spend the next two, three years trying to develop somebody you think could be better than him in the long run. And that's why... At the end of the day, 
when it comes to the decision to extend Baker Mayfield, if you have made that decision, if you think he's going to be top 10 for the next five years and he's worth extending right now, then the money you give him, it really doesn't matter how high it is. It really doesn't matter how low it is. It doesn't matter if you get a good deal. It doesn't matter if you get a great deal. It matters if you can get his signature on that contract. And if you don't think he's any of those things, then you should start planning for the future and trying to draft another quarterback instead of tying yourself to a quarterback at a good number because that strategy has never yielded great results. I'm honestly of the opinion that I think the Browns are pretty sold on Baker Mayfield. I mean, if they weren't, you would have seen some footsteps or some small moves towards trying to, to see if what they can do as far as a developmental prospect behind him. But since Case Keenum's still on the roster and he's obviously going to be the backup, um, you know, it just doesn't seem like they aren't sold on him. So if they are sold on him, you might as well sign him now. But if Baker wants a bigger number, I wouldn't blame him for playing this season out because this seems like the type of year where he can have big numbers and really get that money, the same money that Lamar Jackson is going to get, that presumably Josh Allen is going to get, and that, you know, if Baker Mayfield plays at an MVP level this year, he would be deserving of. But that's my thoughts on the whole contract situation. Let me know your thoughts down below. Do you think quarterback contracts and the amount of money a quarterback gets matters as much as we discuss it? Or do you think we over discuss this and kind of overrate how much money and how much that actually matters to the long term success of the team? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. But again, guys, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Have a good night.